Hey guys, so this week we're going to be taking a look at the liver. Um, our focus on this week's slideshow is just going to be on the normal liver. So we're going to look at anatomy and physiology. And then next week we'll do a PowerPoint talking about ultrasounds of the liver, um, our actual techniques and stuff like that. The liver is a pretty big organ. So... Um, it's actually our largest organ in the abdomen, uh, and we all know that it's located in the right upper quadrant. The stomach can be found posterior and lateral to the left lobe of the liver. The duodenum is medial to the right lobe of the liver, and the body of the pancreas can actually be seen just inferior to the left lobe. And uh, that would explain why we can actually sometimes use the liver as a window to see the pancreas. The liver is almost fully covered by perit um, peritoneum, except for one area, which we call the bare area. That bare area is a portion of the posterior surface of the liver that is in direct contact with the diaphragm. Uh, when we talk about the liver, we actually divide it into lobes, which can then get further divided into segments. These lobes and segments are divided by fissures within the liver. Um, Sonographically, it's the structure that lie within these fissures that allow us to identify the different lobes um, and the different segments from each other. Some of the structures that we can see on ultrasound that lie within these fissures include things like hepatic veins, the portal veins, um, not all the portal veins in these portions, the ligamentum teres, and the ligamentum venosum. There are four major lobes of the liver, which are right, left, quadrate, and caudate. When we talk about ultrasound, we don't really talk about the quadrate lobe. We really only focus on right, left, and caudate. Um, but next week uh, in that PowerPoint, we'll actually talk about how we break up the liver in our study. Um, we have our hepatic veins, which go between the lobes and the segments. So that means that they are interlobar and intersegmental. Um, we can use our hepatic veins to help identify different segmental boundaries. The middle hepatic vein is found within the main lobar fissure. And it helps separate the anterior segment of the right lobe from the medial segment of the left lobe. And then we have the right hepatic vein, which runs in the right intersegmental fissure and divides the right lobe into anterior. And again, what I want you guys to remember is the fact that the liver has multiple fissures. And on ultrasound, it is the structures that lie within the fissures that allow us to differentiate the lobes and segments of the liver. When we talk about our portal veins, they're actually intrasegmental, except for the portion of the ascending left portal vein, and that portion of the left portal vein is intersegmental. Um, the left intersegmental fissure helps separate the lateral medial lobes of the left lobe. And now let's talk about some of the ligaments that we see in ultrasound. So ligaments within the liver are typically seen as echogenic and that would be because of the presence of collagen and fat within and around them. The falciform ligament attaches to the superior surface of the liver to the diaphragm, and to the upper abdominal wall. It helps divide the right and the left lobe. The ligamentum teres is the inferior border of that falciform ligament. And so this is often why when you hear people talking about the falciform ligament um, and the ligamentum teres or the round ligament, they get used interchangeably. On ultrasound, when you're looking at the transverse liver, we can typically identify the ligamentum teres as an echogenic triangle shape, which I will point out um, a little bit later. We also then have the ligamentum venosum, which is the lig which travels from the ligamentum teres to the portal vein. It lies within the fissure that separates the caudate lobe from the left lobe, and the ligamentum venosum is the remnant of the um, uh, obliterated umbilical vein. 
from when we were all fetal tissue. So here you can see this echogenic triangle within the liver. That would be the ligament and teres or the round ligament. And then here I have an image where I'm in the longitudinal, I'm in a longitudinal view or plane of the left lobe, and you can see this echogenic line here, um, and that would be the ligament and venosum. So here I actually put together a chart myself that identifies different structures, like all the um, hepatic veins, the right middle and left, the portal veins, and what they help differentiate and where they are located. I've even included things like the gallbladder fossa, the ligamentum teres, and the ligamentum venosum. I would strongly recommend that you guys make yourself a chart like this. Um, when you first start scanning, it can be really, really hard to wrap your head around what structure helps you identify what, and the more that you scan, the more this becomes ingrained in your brain, and eventually you'll think that it's common knowledge. Um, but again, practice makes perfect, and the best way to practice is to write and to read and to talk about it. Now, I truly believe that we can make anything fun, including learning about the liver. So let's talk about some fun facts of the liver. So what you might not have known is that each segment of the liver has its own blood supply, lymphatic and biliary drainage. The caudate lobe has its own direct drainage into the IBC. That is a really, really, really important fact because when we are looking at patients who have things like um, portal hypertension or cirrhosis, what we can get is redistribution of the volume of the liver and the caudate lobe can actually become really enlarged. It becomes enlarged because blood is always going to be looking for um, kind of that route of least resistance. And if the caudate lobe can directly drain blood into the IVC, then a lot of the blood through the liver is going to be going straight there instead of trying to drain it into the um, hepatic vein. The capsule of the liver is called the glycine capsule. And we already talked about the bare area, which is the one area of the liver that is not covered by the peritoneum. And the ligamentum venosum is where the ductus venosus was in utero. Now we're going to start talking about the physiology behind the liver. Um, it's a pretty fantastic organ that does a whole lot for us. It helps clean our blood. It stores minerals um, and vitamins. It helps create vitamins for us, um, it breaks down nutrients so that our bodies can keep building cells. It is incredible. What we should know is that the functional unit of the liver is a lobule, and lobules are made up of hepatocytes and cupfer cells. The cupfer cells are what help protect the hepatocytes by destroying toxic or harmful substances. The liver metabolizes fat, carbs, proteins, and it helps form bile and urea. Um, so as I said before, our, the frankum of the liver is made up of hepatocytes and cupfer cells, and those are organized into lobules. Around the edge of each lobule, there are multiple portal triad. The cupfer cells are the cells that will do all the cleaning, and the hepatocytes are the cells that will help metabolize, store, digest, and then produce bile. Our liver absorbs lots of nutrients from the portal um, vein blood. And remember that that portal vein blood is coming from our digestive tract. So um, as we had talked about before, the liver has a dual blood supply from the portal venous system and from the hepatic artery. Before we go any further, do you guys actually remember where the hepatic artery comes from? On the chance that you've forgotten, let me just quickly remind you that it's a branch off of the celiac axis, and the celiac axis is one of the main branches off the aorta, and the celiac axis has three main branches. It has the splenic artery, the hepatic artery, and the left gastric artery. The hepatic artery further divides into the gastroduodenal artery, which is an artery we can see in the anterior part of the pancreatic head. Um, 
And then we have the hepatic artery proper, which is, of course, what feeds our liver. Um, our liver also helps break down proteins. So it will break down proteins into amino acids. And remember that amino acids are the building blocks of all of our cells. And it helps metabolize fat. It um, helps with the production of fatty acids from carbohydrates. It results in the formation of cholesterol and phospholipids, which are absolutely necessary um, to build cells. So we can't live without fat, we can't live without carbs, and we most definitely cannot live without um, protein, which is why it's so important that all of us eat a really well-balanced diet. And again, the liver really ceases to amaze us. With its ability to store minerals and vitamins, help regulate blood volume, and detoxify our blood of drugs and alcohol, it can also create blood plasma proteins such as albumin, fibrinogen, prothrombin, and globulin. Prothrombin and fibrinogen are crucial blood clotting factors that are produced by the liver. So if we weren't making them, we'd have an increased chance of bleeding out to death. And then we also have heparin, which is an anticoagulant, which is produced by the liver. Um, and that helps keep our blood so that it doesn't develop into clots, more or less. It is needless to say that our liver is an extremely important organ. And hopefully you kind of realize why we can't live without it. Um, the next slideshow that I put together is going to be for the actual... Um, scanning technique of the liver and talking about the different segments. And hopefully you have found this a bit helpful um, and helps you decide what you need to know when it comes to studying for the liver. Bye guys!